Anybody else feel a little cheated this morning, or is it just me? Okay, maybe it's just me. Let me explain. So, for the past week or so, we've been hearing this story of Tobit, and we heard about um, Tobit wanting to die. We heard about Sarah wanting to die and why that she was stricken with this demon. And we get presented with the, the part from the book of Tobit this morning where we have the wedding. But what happens to the demon? How does she get delivered? That's what I wanted to know. So one of the, the verses that were skipped this morning, there was only three, and this is where I complain. If you're going to give us a long reading anyway, what's three extra verses? Chapter 8. When they had finished eating and drinking, the girl's parents wanted to retire. They brought the young man, Tobiah, out of the dining room and led him into the bedroom. At this point, Tobiah, mindful of Raphael's instructions, took the fish's liver and heart from the bag, which he had with him, and placed them on the embers for the incense. The demon, repelled by the odor of the fish, fled into Upper Egypt. Raphael pursued him there and bowed him hand and foot. Then Raphael returned immediately. This is where we see the archangel Raphael bringing about healing. Now, I don't know why they skipped those verses. I don't know if it's because of the fact that we have a fish's liver and heart being placed on uh, burning coals. But if if an angel told me to put a liver and a heart of a fish on coals in order to deliver somebody, I would do that. Of course, Tobiah doesn't know that his companion, Azariah, is actually Raphael. But that's another story. And I really wanted to preach on the gospel. But thank you for letting me geek out for a bit. (laughs) We hear Jesus commanding in the gospel, um, not commanding, but reminding us of the greatest commandments, to love God and to love one's neighbor as oneself. You know, this is very important these days that we have a love for God that doesn't that doesn't allow anything else to detract from it, but that also remembers that we're called to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, a lot of times people will say things like, you know, if people aren't if they're if they're not doing anything that's harming anybody else, then there's nothing wrong with it. Well, that's also not true. It's funny that people will say to us as Christians that Christianity is man-made, but if you ever noticed, our commandments go against the desires of men. And this is um, even more the case in the martyrs that we celebrate today, St. Charles Luanga and his companions. Now, we have have an image of St. Charles Luanga in the back of the church there, uh, over the, the archway there in the back. St. Charles Luanga and his companions were being, they were in the court of the king at the time in Uganda. And the king had a particular predilection for having relations with the young boys. And Charles Luanga and his companions, in coming to faith, recognized that this was a sin against their dignity and it was a sin on behalf of the king. And so in defiance of the king, they began to say no. And so the king, in outrage, put them to death. It's interesting that this is what it means for us as Christians we stand up in the face of something completely immoral, even at the threat of death. This means to love God above all things else, but also it means to love one's neighbor as oneself, not wanting one's neighbor to be committing such immoral acts either. This, of course, smacks in the face of today's society, which wants us to celebrate certain sins, And then if we don't, we're looked at as the ones who hate. But the commandment is clear. Love God, love your neighbor. 
So if we say no to sin and if we advise people not to sin, it's not out of hatred for anybody. It's out of love. And so we ask the Lord that we may have his heart, especially during this time as we're preparing, during the novena in in anticipation for the sacred heart of Jesus, that our hearts may be like Jesus's, that we may love God above all things and above all people, and that we may love our neighbors as Jesus loves our neighbors. Amen.